Hey folks, Dino Bob here, taking you back to Ben Bray Park for a double dinos. This time we've got Pachyrhinosaurus peritora and Edmontosaurus cuapicensis. Um, the latter was briefly its own genera till uh, it was determined that uh, it's just a variant on Edmontosaurus. So we're walking our way in, and uh, last time we were in South America, but we didn't have an entry gate. And now we do, and there it is. Uh, it's uh, based on a ruin in uh, South America, uh, have, um, a Native American culture. And uh, we're going to proceed on to the North America gate. And this uh, area was inspired by a Hudson Bay trade fort. And, uh, because it was a trade for it. This is a functional area. We've got the restroom you can see there. We spin around to the right and take a peek in that building. We have a gift shop. Um, we probably should figure out some good signage for that. And also for the uh, uh, eating establishments uh, here on the other side of the trading post. Uh, something thematic, I suppose. Anyway, we're going to head on out, but we're not going to walk the whole distance because it's a long way out there because I'm expecting to put some other things between here and there. So this is the habitat that I set up and did the terrain painting on, did some rock work on. It's uh, largely a, a large uh, hill that's been bisected by that rock section. A lot of times you've watched me place the uh, stuff and I didn't do the fussy work of uh, sort of uh, making the uh, stuff put down with the brush look better and be better spaced um, and cleaned up because it will put things in the middle of rocks and what have you and that's not so great. So uh, I uh, made sure we had enough plants for the animals and now the job was to uh, put them in good places and uh, have it look uh, reasonably aesthetic. Um, this uh, obviously takes a while, so you're, you're seeing a bit of that. I will be going on and doing some additional work uh, that I don't have a video of, uh, putting down some more rocks and stuff to uh, blend everything in. This habitat is right up against a river, and so there was work I wanted to do to kind of blend that in. Um, from some angles, it almost looks like the pond for the animals have for water is part of the river, uh, or at least an offshoot of the river, um, and that's fine. Um, we're uh, going to have a walkthrough video, and I'll talk more about that. Actually. You are getting to see me put some of the more rocks in, uh, because that's another part. Um, a lot of times I like to put the rocks in afterwards, um, because I have a better idea of where the voluminous and uh, numerous bunch of trees and such are going to be, and uh, what needs uh, sort of livening up. Uh, so here we are on the walk in. Uh, we are on a North American covered bridge uh, and we're going to go across it and come down and you'll see there's a branch off here uh, to a viewing area and we're going to walk down that, uh, that uh, plank trail and uh, take a look at the habitat from the viewing area. How's that sound? The covered area here is split into two parts. One is a pathway that continues on um, in order to theoretically handle the in and out flow of guests. And then the uh, viewing area often, much like I often do on the main paths of the zoo. Um, you can see we've got our hadrosaurs already in the water, uh, cruising around, checking things out, and may have caught a glimpse of Pachyrhinosauruses up on the hill. I've uh, got view screens at either end for the two animals that are in there. And we're going to go out the, the other way. 
Uh, right now, this is just a turnaround, a dead end, but you can see the slope that actually goes down to the river. Uh, and I modified the map a little bit and I had uh, water splashes that I needed to take out because when I was building without uh, the uh, game running, I couldn't see them. Uh, so there's there was a good look at the covered bridge and, and what it looks like from the outside. And back around and up the trail and then we'll cut to the right and head down along the fence. So just at the bottom of the bridge, there is a place where you can look out to get a sense of the habitat as a whole. A bit of a landscape look, not terribly close, um, but uh, you know, it has its purpose. I threw together a little cover for uh, animal information screens and uh, I shrunk them down a little bit to fit two on a board uh, so that the board wasn't too big. And I placed several of these, and uh, while things were being buggy, uh, two of these sets stopped wanting to work right. Um, they had power, um, and then even um, when I could get the other screens on, I couldn't get those on. And that's when I, I actually recorded this. So we're stopping here because we have one of our animals right there by the fence, and of course he turns his back on us. So. We'll just sidle over for a better view and uh, have him uh, walk across for us a little bit. See another one up on the hill. Uh, they've got a piece of enrichment up there to you know get them up on the high ground for a view uh, for our guests down below. So down the end, you can see the rocks there. That kind of marks the end of the exhibit, and there would be a keeper path off that. Oh no, this one isn't the end. This is the interim one to break up that uh, long run of fencing and uh, currently did uh, animal information screen. There are the ones at the end, uh, down at the end of the path there. So animal care facilities will be off to the right there, just past the rocks on the right. Um, and uh, a lot more park out in this direction. We're going to walk down a little further to the uh, last of the animal information screens which is working and a better view of those uh, end of exhibit rocks. So, uh, go up a little bit and uh, give you a look at what the exhibit as a whole looks like. There's a care building down there, uh, one I used before but I uh, also uh, doubled up on some of it. So. You know, technically there's one for each animal, but I don't know how they would uh, get them to do that. I may put in some fencing later that would guide that. Um, but in order to keep enough space for the animals, uh, I would have to leave the gates open all the time. Um, it's something you have to do in games like this, because while a real animal would uh, recognize it had additional space and spaces it would be, at other times, uh, the game animals don't. So our first uh, time with the animals is a bunch of the pachyrhinosaurs uh, cruising along. There are a couple of hadrosaurs in the background. And a single shot. These animals have been given a woolly coat by the devs because there's a couple of pieces of art uh, speculating on this. Um, not a lot uh, other than it could be supporting this uh, particular interpretation. But this is one of the times that they decided the rule of cool one, and uh, there he is. Uh, they got uh, kind of a neat beard going there, uh, gray, serious gray in the whiskers there, uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I think personally, I would have rather had all three of the alternate species uh, be scaly, but that's just me. There's still two of them, so I'll be happy with those. Here's the, the Peritorum in all its furry wonder, uh, grazing on rocks. And uh, there are hadrosaurs in here. Uh, I always struggled with the species name of this animal. Uh, it's uh, based on Eskimo words, which I'm not terribly familiar with. I, didn't sh I shouldn't say Eskimo these days. It was my vintage, don't poop on camera. Uh, <laughs> um, 
uh, Inuit uh, is uh, one of the preferred uh, names uh, these days. So, uh, Inuit words. Uh, anyway, uh, the animals uh, come down and use their water, like this guy coming to take a drink. No, you're not going to take a drink. You look like you're going to take a drink. Well, I guess you're not. <sighs> Sigh. And you're going to walk toward me. So we're going to close our animals with a look at our bull. He's got, uh, this specimen has uh, very red coloring, uh, a little bit on his chest and very much so on the frill. He looks pretty ma majestic even with all that fur. Uh, so uh, winding up another video, um, I hope to be doing more on this soon. Um, and uh, if you liked it, leave a comment, leave a like, um, subscribe if you, if you want to keep getting my videos. This is Dino Bob, and uh, you all take care and be kind to each other out there, and I'll see you in another video. Bye now.